Have you ever wanted to clone a popular application? Have you ever felt that creating a clone of a popular application is a tough process? Well, in this video, I would cover how you can create a one-on-one -on -one replica of the YouTube application in less than a hour using Locofy. So, hey awesome people, I am Justin, a user of Locofy. And in this video, I will be showing how you can create a YouTube clone in less than a hour using Locofy. Without wasting much time, let's dive deep into it. So before we start, just a note that I would not be implementing the entire functionality of YouTube, but rather focus on the core part of the application. The code and the resources used in this video would be linked down in the description below, so feel free to check that out. By the end of this video, you would be able to build this YouTube clone, which utilizes multiple APIs to fetch data. This application is currently running locally on my machine, and by searching anything in the search field, you can see that our application fetches API in the background and returns YouTube cards for us. And when I click on the YouTube cards, I get redirected to the video page just like YouTube. Okay, so let me move to the design of the application. As you can see, the YouTube homepage that we all know is designed in Figma. Usually, once the designers finish their designs, they send it over to the developers who may take anywhere between weeks to months to finish the development process. But by using the Locofy plugin, you would be able to simplify that complex process and lay your hands on the code in less than a few hours. So before we begin, let me just give you a quick overview of the Locofy UI and then we will go in detail about the Locofy tagging process. First head on over to the resources tab, go to plugins and search for Locofy. Click on the plugin and hit on run. Now once the plugin gets loaded, click on the project bar on the top and click on create new. Give it a suitable name, for this instance, let me call it YouTube Clone. And select a framework. Now we would be using React along with JavaScript for this project. So let's select React and JavaScript and click on Create. Now once you create a project, click on a frame to activate the Locofy plugin. And now you can see the tagging widget on your right. The tagging widget is the most important widget in Locofy because as you can see, there are many static designs such as buttons and images in our design. We humans can identify them easily, but as machines, they would only understand them as shapes and colors. So we tag our design elements, which is used to make the application much more interactive and responsive. You can also use drag and drop pre-built components from popular UI libraries such as Material UI bootstrap and ant design. For this project, since we are copying the design from YouTube, we would not be using any pre-built components over here. After tagging, you can click on the preview button to preview how your design has been transformed into an awesome and responsive website. Locofy generates all the code behind the scenes and it renders the code live on the preview screen. Once you like the preview, you can click on the view code button and you would be navigated to the Locofy builder. So now that you have an overview of the Locofy UI, let's see how tagging in Locofy works. But before that, you need to take a look at what happens if you do not tag your designs. In a copy of the design, you see that the search field and the button do not work initially because as I said, it is a machine and it only knows shapes and colors. And in order for us to tell Locofy that the element of this design over here is a search field and the element over here is a button, we use the tagging widget which comes with a lot of tags for us to tag the elements. So let's select the search field over here and give it a tag of input. Since we want to get input from the user, click on input and since our input field is a custom design and not from a UI library, let's click on none and check if the basic attributes are right. Looks good. So now let's move on to the styling and layout tab. Now in the styling and layout tab, we take care of responsiveness and change how our elements look in different screen sizes and different states. You can see that we have the ability to add pre-built effects and some CSS properties. For example, on the 960 pixel screen size, we do not want the search bar to be so large. So we can add a max width setting here of 240 pixels. 
click on add more and search for max width and give it a value of 240 pixels all right looks good so like you see the input field will not be larger than 240 pixels in screen sizes which is less than 960 pixels so now let's move on to the actions tab over on the actions tab you can take care of the user flow like change page scroll into view open url and more since this is an input field we do not want to add any on click function so we can skip this and click done now let's see on the preview if the input field works it does so now that you know how tagging in locofy works we can try one more so let's take the draw for instance let me first tag the drawer itself click on it and on your right you can see in the custom tags click on drawer and then give it a placement of left since it needs to come from the left to right so that's it now let me go and tag the hamburger menu button over here so click on the hamburger menu button and give it a tag of button since we are copying from the YouTube design, we would not be using any UI libraries. So click on none. Over here, click on toggle drawer and then choose the drawer. In this case, the menu drawer. Right. So on the preview screen, click on the hamburger menu button and the drawer would come on the left. Now let's quickly tag one final item from our video page. So let's tag the YouTube video iframe over here. Click on it and give it a tag of YouTube. And in this, place the URL and select the attributes that you require and click on done. On your left, you can see in the preview screen that Locofy automatically gets the video from the YouTube URL and displays it on your website. Awesome. So now you would understand the basics of tagging. But what if you want to save more time instead of tagging? In Locofy, there is an AI called as Loco AI, which automatically finds the right tag for the custom static design elements that you have made. Once you click on it, Locofy scans the entire design and suggests you tags for the design elements. It also states the accuracy of the tags, and if you're happy with the suggestions, you can click on accept, and since we are not using any UI libraries, click on none, and then done. As you can see, it's so simple to tag quickly and easily with Loco AI. And with the help of Loco AI recommendations, you can go through the tagging process even quicker. Awesome. Now, one further note on responsiveness is that I strongly recommend you to use auto layout functionality when designing for Locofy. With auto layout, you can make your design much more responsive in Figma and Locofy automatically picks up the settings. However, in Figma, there is a limit. When the screen size becomes too small, the design starts to break down. You can take care of this in Locofy. You would also use the Styling and Layout tab to make few changes in some screen layouts, just like CSS media queries. For example, we want to hide this sidebar over here in a smaller screen size. So let's simply select it, go to the Styling and Layout tab, and go to a smaller screen size for example, let's select the tablet screen size and change the display over here from show to hide. Now in the preview, you can see that the sidebar is hidden for smaller screen size. With these media query tabs, you can customize all these properties to make your design fully responsive. Now you just need to do this for other design elements and your design would become ready to generate code and you can move to production in no time. So. Now that you have understood how Locofy tagging and process works, let's move to the interesting part, the code. Click on the frame and select view code in builder. Now select the frames which you want to export. Let's select all the frames over here and let's select view code in builder. Now once Locofy finishes syncing your design, you can click on the view code in builder and you will be navigated to the Locofy builder. Welcome to the Locofy builder. Let me show you around over here. There are three main things that you can do. Firstly, over here you can find the generated code from the Locofy plugin. Next, since we are using React as our framework, 
we can easily create components and add props to it in the Locofy Builder. Therefore, let us add a component now. So you would have noticed that the YouTube header on the top remains constant for all the pages. So let us make that as a component. Click on the header bar, which comprises all of the designs that we wish to make as a component. So click on make component and give it a suitable name. Click on create and voila, your component has been created. So we have to repeat this process over to all the pages which has the header bar on it. So let me do that. So on your right, you can see that props have been added automatically by the Kofi Builder. We can also add custom props to it if you require. Let me elaborate more about props in another component. So let me create another component. Over here, you see that we are repeating the same element a few times. So we would like to turn this into a component in order for us to reduce code duplication. So first let's select one of these buttons and create a component for it. Click on make component and give it a suitable name like sidebar button for this instance. Now you'll notice that some of the content would need to change between the different cards. We can easily support this by adding props for the component. Simply click on add prop, click on the layer for which you need to create the prop. So let's select the SVG which is the image and give it a suitable name. So let's save it and then you have a prop. So now let's create a prop for the text too. So click on the add prop, click on the text, give it a suitable name and click on save. You'll now see that the prop has been added into a component code. Now it's easy to reuse the same component. Click on the next card and click on make component. Now select the already existing component that we created just now. You see that the props have been automatically created as Locofy detected that these elements have different content or styles. That's how you can easily create components and props for your design. Now let me just quickly make all the design elements into components. All right, so now that you understand how to create components and add props to it, let me show you a cool thing in Locofy, and that is to view and share live responsive prototype. Click on the view prototype button and then share prototype. You can share the prototype link to your teammates via email or just Click on copy and send it over to your teammates. Now let's try the link and see how it would look on our browser. Awesome. You can see that a YouTube clone is set up. Now let's export this code and integrate the APIs. Click on the blue export button and select all the frames that you wish to export. Also select the starting screen over here. If you wish to directly add this to your GitHub repo, you can do so by connecting your GitHub account over here. We would be downloading the zip file of the code to edit in our own IDE. So click on confirm export and let Locofy generate your code. So once it gets downloaded, you can now view it in your own IDE. Let's move on. So now I have opened the downloaded code which is generated by Locofy. And here if you can see, we have the pages which correspond to the pages found in the Figma design and also the components which we created in the Locofy Builder. We have the YouTube search bar and the sidebar component separately. So now we have the code ready in our disposal. Since we have to build the YouTube application by integrating various APIs, we must be clear in what features we are gonna build. If you see in our design, especially the homepage, we have a grid of YouTube cards stacked horizontally that we need to populate with data. So what is the data that we are looking for over here? We need the thumbnail image, title, channel logo, channel name, and the statistics like view count and the published date and etc. And also when the user clicks on the YouTube card, we need to show the YouTube video in the video page. So we also require the video ID. So now that we know what data we require for application, where can we exactly find them? Well, you can get all of the data from the YouTube data API. Over here in the YouTube data API site, we will be using the video list API and the search list API primarily. You see the YouTube API requires you to pass an API key, right? So where exactly can we get the API key for our application then? For that, you need to head on over to Google Cloud Console and go to APIs and services. 
Over there, click on Credentials and click on Create Credentials. Now click on API Keys so that you create an API key which you can use it to fetch the YouTube API. So click on Create API and once it gets created, store this API key safely in a file or the best way to add it to React is to create a .env file and store it in a variable. So let me just create a .env file and store this .env and for the variable prefix it with react app all in caps so that react knows that you are having a variable. So now we need the YouTube data API itself. So for that, let's go back to our YouTube API site, go to the search bar and search for YouTube data API. Now click on YouTube data API. So now you would see the blue enable button popping over there. So click on enable and wait for it to get loaded. So now that it's done, we have access to the YouTube API and to access the YouTube API, we have to pass on the API key, which we got earlier. So let's head back to our code and start doing our homepage. Coming to the first page in our code, that is the homepage. Let's start integrating the APIs into the Locofy generated code. Firstly, let me set the context over here. In our design, if you can see for our homepage that we need data for generating the YouTube cards. Now in the YouTube application, the home page would be filled with the recommendations or the most popular videos. So to get that data, which is similar to the YouTube application, we use videos list API from YouTube. So in this videos list API, I'd be using the most popular videos use case, which automatically fills the required parameters. So if you click on show code over here and go to HTTP, so you can see the URL that we need to fetch the data from. So coming back to our code, let's now fetch the API and use the data to generate the YouTube cards. So first we use a use state hook because in React, we need to change the state whenever the data changes. So since we are fetching the API data and dynamically generating the YouTube cards, we need to change the state of the React application. So we use the use state hook. So after that, we use the use navigate hook because once the user clicks on a YouTube card, he gets navigated to the video page wherein he, the video is displayed. So we use the use navigate hook in order to be used in the on click function later in the YouTube cards generation stage. So after that, we use a use effect hook to fetch the API data because we only want it to run once. We do not want it to continuously run whenever the user refreshes the web page. So we use the use effect hook. And inside the use effect hook, we use an asynchronous function called as fetch videos. We are fetching the data from the internet. And when we fetch data from the internet, we use an asynchronous function. And inside the asynchronous function, we pass on the API key and store the response into a recommended variable, which contains the video data of the YouTube cards in JSON format. So after that, we use a separate function called as get logo, which comprises of an asynchronous function because YouTube does not provide us with the channel logo along with the videos list data itself. If you see in our design, we have the channel logo along with the YouTube cards. So we use another channels API in order to fetch the YouTube channel logo by passing on the channel ID. So once we do that, we store just the URL of the logo and return it since this is a function. So after that, we have a list which is initialized with the YouTube data that we have fetched from the API. So along with the list of data that we have fetched from the API, we also add the get logo function. That is we are combining two data into one so that we can easily iterate through them. So after which we use the await keyword because as you can see, we have used an asynchronous function while iterating through the list. So we convert it from an object to raw data, which we can use it to populate the YouTube cards. So after that, since we have received all the data, we can pass the array of data. We use a custom function called as chunk array in groups in order to divide the YouTube data into subgroups of four. The reason we do it is because in our design, if you can see, we horizontally have a stack of four YouTube cards. So we need groups of four YouTube data, which we can use to generate the YouTube cards. So now let me show you chunk array in groups. But before that, let us call fetch videos function. So coming to the chunk array in groups custom function, we basically take an empty array and store subgroups of four arrays into it so that it becomes a nested array. 
So that's all we require in order for us to fetch and store and process the data to use it to generate the YouTube cards by itself. So now we can go down below and start to add the YouTube cards generation. All right. In order for us to generate the YouTube cards on demand by using the YouTube data that we have fetched from the YouTube API, let's create a code block over here and use the videos variable from the use state hook and check if its length is greater than zero. The reason we do it is to check if we have stored the data inside the videos variable. The length of the videos list is greater than zero. That means the YouTube data has been stored inside the videos variable. And if that is a true, let me iterate through the videos list because the videos list is actually a nested list. If you remember the chunk array in groups function that we did earlier. So let me use the map function in order to iterate through inside it. So using the map function, let me call it group videos callback function. And inside the callback function, let me return topmost div, which is responsible for the responsive design for horizontally stacked YouTube cards because it acts as a container. If you see in our design, the design element with the name div contents act as a container to hold the four YouTube cards. So let me return that first along with a closing tag. Okay. So since we are using the ternary operator, if this is true, we return the YouTube card. And if we don't, that is the asynchronous function is still running and the YouTube data is getting stored inside the videos variable. We display a placeholder value. Let's say loading for this instance until then. All right. So inside this, let me have another code block in which we iterate through the group videos variable once again, in order for us to get the raw data, which is used to populate the YouTube HTML tags dynamically. Let me call this callback function as video. And inside that, let me add the entire YouTube cards HTML tag over here. All right. So if you see in the first div of the thumbnail, we need to have a key. Since the video ID would be a good identifier in this case, let me give the video ID as the key. Since the user needs to click on the thumbnail, and once the user clicks on the thumbnail, he gets navigated to the video page. So let me add an on click function over here. So in that on click function, let me just have a temporary function over here for now. And let me add it later. Coming back to populating the data that we have fetched from the YouTube API. So for that first, let's go and change the URL of the image. So for that, let me add another code block with parenthesis and have an or operator along with it. Let me populate the data. So in this case, in order for us to obtain the URL of the thumbnail, let me go to video dot snippet dot thumbnails dot high dot URL. We use the or operator over here because in some cases, the YouTube data API would not provide thumbnail URL. In those cases, using the OR operator would, would allow us to render this image as a default in case if things go wrong. So that's for the image and for the channel logo. If you remember, we used another API to fetch the channel logo and added it to our YouTube list. So we can access that by calling video.logo. So let me call video.logo and give the OR operator. So the video.logo would contain the URL of the channel logo. So for the title of the video, let's add a parenthesis and call video.snippet.title. For the channel name, again, let's add the parenthesis video.snippet.channelTitle in this instance. YouTube API only provides the whole number of the amount of views a YouTube video got. So we may need to format it. But for now, let's add the whole number itself. So inside, let's call video dot statistics in this case dot view count. And for the published date, let's call in video dot statistics dot published at to render the date and time at which the video was uploaded. As you can see, we have finished populating the data that we have fetched from the YouTube API into the HTML tags. So now once the asynchronous function gets called, the data gets stored into the videos variable. 
and the data that got stored into the videos variable would be iterated inside and would be populated inside the HTML tags and the YouTube cards would be generated. So this is how you develop the home page of the application. Now let's quickly check the progress of our application. Let me just head on over to the application which is locally hosted and you can see that our YouTube application works perfectly. It fetches data from the YouTube API and renders it rightly. You can see that I have formatted the view count and the published at date to be more accurate to the original YouTube application. To do this, you just need to use the internationalization API provided by JavaScript by default and the format distance package found in React. So now let's move on to the search bar component. All right. So let me also give you the context for what we need to build over in the search bar component. So in the search bar component, once the user clicks on the search button in the header, the user should be navigated to the search results page along with the search term. So how do we do that exactly? So in order for us to implement the on click functionality, we need to add an additional prop apart from the Locofy generated code. In the props, add an on click prop and what happens when the user clicks on the search? The user gets navigated to the search results page. So how do we do that? We use a function called as handle search click that validates the on click property is true. That means you are currently in the search page. If it's not, then navigate to the search page along with the search term. So how we use this navigate instance? So previously I showed you in the home page how we have used the navigate instance over here, the same applies. So after that, since we need to pass on the search value, we use the search value and the set search value function. So that's all which is pertaining to the YouTube search bar component. And now let's move on to the search results page. All right. So let me explain the search results page a little bit before we get into the code. So basically when the user clicks the search button in the header, the search term needs to be passed to the search results page. And by using the search term, the data would be fetched from the API. So what API would we use over here? We will use the search list API, which when passed with the keyword will return with data of the YouTube videos that are related to that video ID. First, we need to retrieve the search term. So I'll be using the use location hook and saving the data into a constant called state. And then I use use state hook because we need to change the state of the application once we receive the data from the API. I also use an use effect hook because we are fetching the data from an API from the internet. And inside the use effect hook, I have a condition to check if the search term is present in the constant state. And then if the search term is present, I pass the search term to the YouTube search URL and pass the YouTube search URL into the get results function. Now inside the get results function, I fetch the data of the YouTube search URL, which is passed on and have it as JSON. Now from the response that I have received, I pass this data to this two function, which is called as list with logos and list with statistics, which we are calling externally because as you know, YouTube does not provide the channel logo by default with the API that we fetch. I'll pass the data into the set videos function, which initializes the data into the videos variable in the use state hook. And once we do this, I would be defining this list with logos and list with statistics function in a utilities folder because it is much simpler to do so. So let me just create a utilities folder over here. And inside the utilities folder, let me give a name of meta.js. So over here, I'll add both the functions which would be used to fetch their respective APIs. So over here in the utilities file, let me add the two functions. So first list with statistics, which retrieves the statistics of the video, which was passed on to the search term. So what happens is that we have various statistics such as likes and views count, which are all available in a separate API for a given video ID. So we have used that API over here. You, we have fetched the data and stored it into a variable, which is then iterated through and stored in another list, which would be returned for us to use in the search results page. So along with the list with statistics function, we also have another function called as list with logos, which also does the same thing, but fetches the YouTube channel logo 
instead of the statistics of the video ID. So since YouTube API does not directly provide you with the channel logo, you'd be using a separate function to fetch the channel logo separately and store it into a list and then return it so that we can use that in the search results page. So after we fetch the data from the get results function, we can now go on and add the YouTube cards which would be generated once the user clicks on the search button in the header file. So let's scroll down a little bit. And you can start to see the YouTube search results locofy generated code. Now we do not want to hard code all the values. So we would be automatically generating based on the search results that we obtain from the YouTube API. We do not need all of the code over here. So let me just have one over here and then delete everything else. All right. So like we did for the home page, in order for us to automatically generate the HTML tags based on the data that we receive from the API, let's create a code block. And in this, let's call the variable, which is used in the use state function variable. We check if the length is greater than zero, like we did for the home page. We iterate through it using the map function. So inside the map function, we'll have the callback function, which is then used to return the div, right? So let's select the entire HTML tags and put it inside the return. Okay, so as we did earlier, for the, for the thumbnail, we need to have a key because to identify each individual item in the list, we'll have a key. And for the key, let me give the video ID and also add the onClick function, wherein we call a new function, which we need to define on the top. So let's define the function. So these two functions called as handle search click and handle video click would be used down in the code snippet where we generate the YouTube cards going back on click. Let's call the handle video click function and pass on the video ID. All right. So that's for the on click function and for the source like the home page, let's add the parenthesis and the or operator and we get the, we get the URL from video.snippet.thumbnails.medium.url So for this, for the image URL, we have added the source and for the video title, video.snippet.title and for the amount of views the video has got, video.statistics.viewcom and when it was published, let's call video dot snippet dot published at. So scrolling down a little bit, we see that we require the channel logo. Let's give the or operator. And for the channel logo, we use video dot logo as a source. And for the channel title, let's go to video dot snippet dot channel title and for the description of the video let's just remove everything over here and just add our description inside over here so the data goes like this video dot snippet dot description all right so since we have used the ternary operator on the top we need to provide an else block right over here so let's give the same else block that we gave on the home page. That would be to have a placeholder value of loading. So it seems like we have an error over here. I believe it will be solved by adding this. Yes, right. So once we save it and compile, it's running successfully. Awesome. So after the search results page, let's move on to the video page. Let's go over to a design and inspect it. So you can see that in our video page, we need to show the video and the related videos to it. So for the video, we are embedding an iframe given by YouTube, which requires a video ID to be passed in order for it to render the video. And we will be fetching the data from the YouTube API, passing the video ID and displaying the related videos on the right. So let's go back to our code. 
So now that we understand the requirements, let's start writing the code. Since we need to pass the video ID from the home page or the search results page to the video page, let's use the use navigate hook in this case. We have already added the use navigate hook to our search results page. So let's add it over to our home page. Going to our home page, let's have a constant navigate, which is an instance of the use navigate hook. And also add this navigate instance to our on click function. In our on click function, let's add the navigate instance wherein once the user clicks on the video thumbnail in the home page, he gets redirected to the video page and also the video data that we fetch from the YouTube API is been passed on to the video page. Going back to our video page, in order for us to retrieve the video data that is passed on from the home page and the search results page, we use the use location hook and store it into a params variable. And also, since we need to change the state of the application once we receive the data, we use the use state hook to change the state of the video and another use state hook to change the state of the related videos that you see on the right. And after that, we use an use effect hook because we are fetching data from the internet. In order for us to fetch the data of the related videos of the video ID, we need the video ID first. So let us extract the video ID by initializing the params to a state variable and having a get results function. Inside the asynchronous function, we check if the state variable which we initialized to the params which we got from our home page has the video ID. If so, we go on and fetch the YouTube data from the past YouTube video ID. And after that, we also use a get logo function like our other pages because as you know, YouTube does not provide us with the channel logo by default. So once we do that, we use a temporary list and store all the response that we received from the APIs into one. We also convert the response from a promise data that we can use down in the part where we generate the YouTube cards. We also require the statistics such as the view count and the like count. So we use another API in order for us to fetch the statistics of the video. So now that we received the data from all the APIs, we pass this data to the set videos function. Since we used two use state hooks, we also use two use state functions along with it. And finally, we call the get results function in order for us to execute it all. So now let's move on and fill in the iframe. So in our iframe, let's convert this into a template string so that we can dynamically pass on the video ID. Now I pass on video dot ID for the video ID to embed in the iframe. So now coming to the HTML tags, Let's populate the data that we fetched from the YouTube API. Over here, we need to pass on the title. So let's pass on video snippet.title. And then again, let's pass on video snippet.title since this is a title of our application of a video. And then going over here, this is a channel logo. So let's convert this into a code block and then pass on video.logo since that is where we have the channel logo and we use the or operator over here because sometimes the YouTube API may not provide us with the channel logo URL. So we keep this source as a default. Scrolling down, let's, let's populate the channel title. So it would be video.snippet.channel title and then scrolling down, let's see that this over here is the like count. So let's call in video dot statistics dot like count. And then 
scroll down a little bit and you would see the view count and the published at date coming in so let's pass on video dot statistics dot view count and for the date at which it was published let's call it video dot snippet dot published at right and for the description just simply give video dot snippet dot description same box over here so let me just copy and paste it right so if you scroll down a little bit you can start to see the right panel over here so if you see in our design the right panel over here instead of hard coding all the values for the cards over here we can simply use the technique that we followed in the home page and the search results page by just having the code snippet of the first YouTube card and then based on the amount of data that we receive from the API, we generate all the other cards. So let me just add a snippet of code for the same. Right. So this snippet of code over here checks if the related videos has data inside it and if data is present, we iterate through it and populate all the key HTML tags over here with the data. So with this snippet of code, our application comes to an end. So now that we have finished our code, let us run the application. We can see that our YouTube clone works perfectly fine. The APIs that we integrated works wonderfully. And so if we click on the video, we get navigated to the video page. If you wish, you can deploy this into a free hosting provider like Netlify or Vercel. All right. So we have come to the end of our video. As you can see with Locofy, we managed to easily turn a YouTube design into responsive front-end code. Then by simply extending the exported project with a few extra snippets of code, we managed to turn it into a proper functional application. If you have any queries or suggestions, feel free to drop them down in the comments and also do comment on what topics you wish me to cover in the upcoming videos. As always, happy building with Locofy.